Yo, what up, street gods, street togs, street bloggy vlog vlogs, or come to the house? All right, uh, some thoughts. Uh, this one is uh, on physique. So everyone wants a nice physique. So the question is, once you have a quote, quote, perfect physique, uh, then what? So the reason why I think uh, this is so important is that it's funny because uh, physique comes from the word physic, right? Like physics, right? Physical, embodied reality, etc. And the funny bias is that in today's world, um, you know, certain things are seen as virtuous, like making a bunch of money, you know, buying a buying an expensive car, buying a Lamborghini, whatever, right? But the funny thing is, or I don't know, Mercedes, whatever. Um, but the funny bias is that we are allowed to purchase beautiful physique, like the curves of a nice Mercedes or AMG or whatever, yet we are not allowed to become beautiful ourselves out of our own accord. So the reason why I find this very bizarre is that in actuality, I believe, building Building a great physique and being able to flex your own physical body is uh, one of life's supreme goals and uh, desires and uh, nice things. Because you know, like it's so funny because like you're allowed to flex how rich you are, how smart you are, but you're not allowed to flex your body. And I think, why? where, where does this bias come from? So I have some theories. Uh, the first theory is that I think it's actually this... Uh, um, it's kind of a capitalistic one, right? So, according to so according to capitalism, uh, you are allowed to um, to purchase beauty. It's democratic. Capitalism is democratic, and yet the body you cannot purchase a beautiful body. Um, the, the interesting hilarity that I personally find is uh, the, actually the truth is the in some ways the body is and the body also is not democratic so what does that mean? that means um, you know it's, it's funny people like oh steroids or you know plastic surgery or what, injections whatever implants actually that does not make one beautiful so like um, even to I understand, so even steroids, you don't just like pop steroids, inject yourself with steroids. I don't even know how steroids work, right? You don't just pop and inject yourself with steroids and then suddenly boom, you get buffer. To my understanding, the way steroids actually works is um, it allows you to recover quicker, which means you could just essentially go to the gym more frequently, more every single day, recover quicker. And so you could keep, uh, you know, working out at intense uh, things. Um, and you know, women who, I mean, I see this a lot now, it's kind of like a little disturbing, like lip injections, cheek injections, I don't know, whatever's, uh, breast augmentation. It doesn't actually look beautiful. It, it looks kind of more like, a, kind of grotesque to me actually. Um, and yeah, Daniel Kunitz, a writer, has a great book called Lift. It was, it was actually quite good. Um, and there's this one ancient quote, I never heard of it before, but we must toil to be beautiful or we must labor to be beautiful. And to me, I find this to be such an interesting uh, thought because um, to build a beautiful body, 
requires effort and uh, courage. Um, and you know, it's it's so, so funny and interesting. It's like once you have a once you have what you consider a quote unquote perfect physique, then what? And so I think this is an interesting thing because like. You know, there's like so many dudes at the gym who are so much better than me, but it um, my personal thought is you could get what you consider um, a beautiful or perfect physique. Like, for example, for me, EK, right? I love my physique. I love the way I look. You know, Cindy got me a new Lamborghini haircut. I like the way I look. There's really no flaws in myself. Uh, maybe get a little slightly bigger chest, but beyond that, I'm, I think my body, my physique is perfect. So then what my goal is actually, at least for myself, I can't speak for you. Uh, my personal goal is to keep just getting stronger. Um, you know, rack pulls, I want to get to the 8 plates, 9 plates, 10 plates, 11 plates, 12 plates. Uh, for my atlas lift, squat hold, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know. I'm um, I'm about to do the eight plates. Should be pretty easy. Then the nine plates, the ten plates, eleven plates, twelve plates. Uh, one of my friends at the gym, Chris, told me that I should get the Texas barbell, which I guess you could just toss on bigger weights. And so for me, I'm my personal curiosity is uh, how far can you take the human body? You know, obviously naturally, right? So and also why I find so interesting, at least about myself, is that. I'm the only person that I know who doesn't even take protein powder. I don't take protein powder, no creatine, pre-workout, none of that nonsense. And also I do everything intermittent fasting, fasted, right? So no breakfast, no lunch. So that means before I go lift and, you know, lift eight plates, right? Seven plates. I don't actually eat anything. I just drink a little bit of black coffee maybe and water and then uh, go lift heavy. And so the I learned this from Nassim Taleb, you know, anti-fragile book. Think about it this way. Before a lion goes and hunts the gazelle, does it eat a granola bar or protein shake or pre-workout or protein bar or protein shake? No, it's, it's actually the hunger which motivates the lion to go hunting and then go kill the prey, right? And so I, I applied that philosophy to uh, weightlifting, powerlifting, hype lifting. And uh, I've done this the last you know, like five years with great results. Um, and so I've proven, you know, through my self right that you don't actually need to eat anything before you work as oh yeah i'm gonna pass out i'm like no you're not you'll be fine um and also there's this like myth that like immediately right after you have to have white protein shake yours so you're not gonna get gains i'm like no i was also found that to not be true is you know i'll lift it around like noon one o'clock and i won't eat dinner till eight and i've still been able to get the the super super monster demigod gains right um and also other things i've uh, discovered right like you don't need to quote quote full range of motion like my atlas lift i just essentially lift off the bar um the rack a little bit hold on my shoulder and just put down and i just maybe move the weight like an inch centimeter two centimeters um and also with rack pulls you know everyone deadlifts off the floor right Honestly, I think in today's world, like assuming you don't compete, right? And I also think com uh, competing is for losers anyways. Um, if you don't compete, you're not a professional powerlifting competitor. I don't really think there's any good reason to do a deadlift. I think it's better to just do a rack pull. Like, so for example, I did um, seven plates and a 10 on each side, 695 pounds or something. After doing the rack pull in the evening and... Um, my legs were insanely sore. And you know, also I feel my whole body, my traps, you know, my biceps, my upper back, um, et cetera. And so certainly I've been able to get way stronger and way buffer in augmenting my muscle mass. Um, you know, I didn't injure myself, right? And then no straps, no nonsense, et cetera. And so then there's really no reason to do a deadlift anymore. I'm just like, just do rack pulls. What is rack pull? Rack pull is, imagine doing a deadlift except it's elevated higher up, so you just put the weight on top of the barbells and stuff like that. Also another thing that I was experimenting too is like, just things I was curious about, I'm like, what if you re reduce the range of motion and just increase the weight? Um, and so even with a bench press, I, I did actually um, kind of like the same elevation as when I did a rack pull. 
uh, on the power rack I used, that's the number five. I just got under the bar, did a crazy arch, and just lifted with my legs and my shoulders while on the floor, like floor bench press, except all the way on the way to the top. And I was able to easily do three plates and a 35 on each side. And then I tried four plates and I, I couldn't budget, right? And so certainly like, I mean, I always say just give it a shot. I mean, um, now doing the floor bench press, whatever, I just treat it more like an accessory lift to, you know, strengthen my, you know, back or, you know, my arch, my hips, my shoulders, stabilizing joints, whatever. Um, bef uh, to improve my rack pulls and whatever. And so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, also other things, no carbs, no sugars, no weed, no alcohol, no nothings. Um, you know, obviously no steroids, uh, none of that nonsense, right? Um, and yeah, just 100% uh, carnivore diet. The only non-meat item I eat is like uh, Sinjua, the fermented mustard greens. I like the Vietnamese mustard greens. Uh, kimchi, no sugar ass. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Zoi! And yeah, and so I figured out the 100% carnivore diet, beef ribs at the Costco business are only 299 pound, go super duper hand, make two wrecks, eat four or five pounds, you're gonna get the, the demigod gain.